welcome everyone. Um, my name is Yumiko Matsuoka and I teach ear training at Berkeley. And uh, we're delighted to welcome Dr. Anand Palti today, from all the way from Israel. And I suspect that some of you are joining us from Israel, that's just wonderful. But uh, he is one of Israel's most um, prominent jazz musicians as a composer, arranger, author, educator, and jazz bass player. And Dr. Palti is a senior lecturer at the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. His areas of expertise include jazz and traditional harmony, counterpoint, advanced ear training, jazz composition, arranging, and orchestration. And he leads the Blood, Sweat, and Tears and the Representative Ensemble, as well as a variety of survey seminars concerning the music of Charles Mingus, Horace Silver, Wayne Shorter, Duke Ellington, Thelonious Monk, and Frank Zappa. And it, <clears throat> his bio is quite a bit longer, but uh, what I'm going to do is instead of reading that, I am going to put his bio that he sent to me uh, on the chat so that if you um, if you like, you can download. And it includes a link to uh, the Spotify of his partial collection of his music that you can listen to later on. So I'll do that. And uh, without further ado, welcome, Dr. Palti. Thanks so much, uh, Professor Musuga, for having me. Um, we will discuss some uh, basic topics um, um, for non so basic um, ear training techniques. Um, the whole idea is just using music for music. Um, because ear training is, could be a complex thing, but uh, if we attach it um, to music, it becomes music and it serves us. Because um, we can say that uh, ear training is, is all about memory. Okay? And memory is a function of uh, experience and just um, having stuff, you know, familiar uh, to us. That's how you remember things. And the basic idea is to memorize things, uh, but um, not just uh, memorize them by heart, you know, so to speak, just to feel them and to understand them and to make to make it a uh, part of us. Okay, so I will um, share screen with, uh, with you guys. Okay, so this is a PowerPoint presentation um, that we'll be watching in a sec. Okay, let me do this. Uh, let me just greet everyone, of course, uh, Professor Tsuka, thank you so much for having me. Natan, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Fortuna, my friend, Eyal, Ophir, Andrew, Nimrod, Tom, Hunter, Michal, Iran, Daniel, Olov, nice to see you again, Gili, of course, Antonina, Gilson, Omer, uh, Daniel, Lior, Tom, Kayla, Noam, um, Chantel, Bar, Ayakar, Darcel, Aurora, and Nimrod Adar. Thanks you guys for coming along. Okay. Um, I cannot see everyone because we have um, 28 participants here. Um, thanks so much for coming. And okay, let's go for the presentation. Okay. Okay, first of all, what we'll do is we'll check out seven, seven codes. Um, there are 15 legit seven codes, okay? Um, when I'm saying legit, that means that we all know them, okay? We all know them, we're using them. It's in the vocabulary, it's the lexicon, okay? It's nothing, um, you know, crazy or unexpected. They're all tertial, they're all built of thirds or, or sometimes suspensions. Um, so basically we have to get familiar with these because these are actually our best friends when it comes to music. Okay, so we must have some fun here. 
Okay. It's all about ear training and ear training is fun and funny. Okay. So who are, or actually what are the 15, seven chords? Okay. So these are the 15, seven chords. Um, let's just check them out. Um, by the way, if you feel like I'm asking any questions, please do so. Okay, I mean, I, I won't be able to see um, everyone, but um, don't be shy and just, you know, speak up because I won't be able to see our um, gestures as far as hands and stuff because, the, you know, the ruler here is very narrow and I cannot see everyone. That's, you know, one thing about the Zoom. So just please speak up and, you know, if you feel like asking or commenting or whatever, you know, it's all free, nice and free. Don't be shy. Okay, so the seventh chord, the fifteen seventh chords. That's the dominant seven right here, major seven, six, which is actually coming from classical music, seste ajouté, added six. Okay, from you know impressionism, Nouvelle, Eric Satie, uh, minor seven, minor major seven. Minus six, seven flat five, which is very common as the French code, um, seven sharp five, which is um, derived from, you know, the whole tone scale, uh, metal seven flat five, which is Lydian. I'm translating it into scales because that's what we do. Uh, metal seven sharp five, Bach's favorite chord, um, diminished seven, fully diminished. Um, diminished major seven, okay, and minus seven plus five, which is um, also known as half diminished, okay, uh, seven sus four, and major seven sus four. Um, that's but also, um, you know, one of his common and frequent. Okay, so let's get into some action here. Now, these are the codes, okay? Um, now, I'll just give you some data, but I'll also give you some ways of thinking about um, these friends here, which are the 15 legit seven chords. Um, basically, this, th these are all in C, but of course they can be in any note, and we should memorize them, because once we memorize them in every key, uh, we have a great, you know, starting point as far as intervals, and they all have melodies. We have to memorize the melody, and then we have to play the the block, the chord. So we'll get it together. I mean, the vertical and the horizontal, you know, phenomena are going to to be one one thing that is happening. You know, sorry, let's play them. Um, we won't do any exercises. These are all tips because we won't be able to um, facilitate a real lesson. But these are all tips for um, practice, basically. So this is the major seven, and that's the way it sounds. That's the six. Dominant seven. Minor major, mysterious. Okay, the James Bond one. Minor six, very melancholic. Minor seven, function is two. Okay, the augmented, dominant, middle seven. That's the French chord, half diminished now. Fully diminished.
Okay, this is like, you know, a shopping list, okay? That's what we go to the grocery with. But the thing is that we have to really start with the simple ones which are actually on top. And then we gradually work in our way towards the complex ones, uh, which are basically with the alter uh, fifths mostly, uh, the, the three diminished chords, which are you know the fully diminished, the half diminished, and the diminished major seven, which derives from the symmetrical um, scale. Um, they're more complex to sing, but still, I mean, you can do it because it's all a matter of practice. I mean, and the thing is that um, once we play the chords while singing them, um, we get a double benefit because it's just melodies, but these are the chords that we have. Okay, um, any questions so far? Do not hesitate, please, and ask if you have any questions. Okay, so I'll just move on. Okay, best way to get familiar with music is music. That we know that we all memorize tunes, you know, either for a gig or when we were kids, we memorized stuff. I mean, um, the more you memorize, the better memory you have. That's another thing. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. To each chord, there is a unique melodic ID that can be memorized by associating it with musical composition, okay? Um, I'll just give you some examples. Um, the sixth chord, okay? That's the full on the head, the Beatles, okay? I mean, if we just attach it and we, just like intervals, you know, or another, another one that we know is um, Blood Fun and Tears and When I Die. We have, you know, the six right there by the harmonica. Steve Katz is playing the harmonica there. Um, Pretty Woman is dominant seven on one, which is blues, okay? Uh, it's not five or four, it's just a tonic blues. Okay, uh, major seven, the well-known um, Chicago, Color My World. Okay, yeah, great songs. Uh, we cannot hear them all, that's why I need to edit them. But that's all we need, we need the ID. Okay, minus six, we all know that. Miles Davis's Autumn Leaves intro. Okay, minus seven, well, um, Rocky Raccoon by the Beatles, um, right on, it's the chord. And of course, um, the diminished, fully diminished chord. Okay. Godfather, okay. That's pretty violin beat. Um, major seven, um, that's a beautiful um, example. Spring is here. It's probably like a typical, you know, signature song. Um, that's by um, Hank Jones here. Just, you know, um, this chord is so, you know, distinct. Uh, it has that unique sound. Okay, um, of course it's Brahms also, uh, third symphony, second chord, uh, minus F flat five, that's an Israeli, that's, that's uh, one for the Israeli guys here. Yeah, I know that Mappen likes it. Yeah. And major seven flat five. Um, okay. Um, that's a tune by um, McCoy Timer, my favorite piano player ever. Um, that's a major seven flat five, the Lydian chord. Okay. 
that's another uh, great example of F over D flat, which gives us um, D flat major seven. We all know this one. It's from uh, My Fair Lady. Don't talk a lot. Okay, that's a very beautiful melody. Um, ba, ba, ba. Here you can just hear an F, but D flat, okay? Laughing through time. And then comes back. Okay, soft chords. Okay, we have sus, um, sus, you know, seven sus four goes to major. We all know and love this song piece. Okay, that's urgent, you know, hold your head up. And then another one that you like, which would give us some um, seven sus four goes to minor. Okay, call his eyes over there. Um, okay, another one would be the major seventh, uh, minor major seventh, very, very typical, okay? Suspense. Okay, Superman chord, that's major seven, um, sub four major seven, okay? Okay, way of usage. How to use these guys? We can use them in several. Once we, we get them together, uh, which should take not too long if we pra practice and attach them. These are only um, my associations for my, you know, for my computer, my computer up here. But, um, you know, we all have our own um, bank, so to say, and of, you know, chords and um, anything that can remind us will contribute to this bank to be there and to be able to just identify, in a, you know, in a sec, in a second, just anything. Okay, ways of usage. Okay, so here we have assorted. We can just, you know, line them up, you know, randomly. Just assorted, just like you know what we see here in the, in that picture here, okay, with the marbles. Another one would be functionally connected, just like these these atoms, okay, here, and another one would be set in a row, atonal result, because we are separating them from any tonality or any functionality. Um, Assorted, let's check it out. Okay, so here we have just, you know, a bunch of chords. Um, the trick here, you can write it, you know, you can write for yourself any exercise in such manner, which means that you have just, you know, for, for that example, D minus seven, and then we just go to the, to the E7. We, have, we need two things here. We need to portray the first chord and then we have to realize, you know, that it goes up a third or down a sixth um, to this um, root. We are not dealing with um, inversions. We are dealing with roots only. And then after we do that, we have to skip from this to this root here. Okay. So, Dr. Palti? Yes. Um, my colleague Jolson has a, had a question, so um, yes, I'm going to please. ask him to, in fact, I think he sent it to you via the chat. Okay, I'll check it out. Right now I cannot see because... Um, um, oh, you're sharing. I'm sh yeah, and this okay. is like I'm um, taking... Okay, the so whole I'll screen. have him speak up um, maybe in the near future. Yes, that will be superb. Okay, so let's just hear it and uh, I'm not, you know, expecting anybody to be able to sing it right away. It's not that hard, but uh, the thing is, um, the trick is just to, just like modus novus or anything like, you know, which is very intervallic, um, just skip from this um, C, from this E, and then having this accomplished, this arpeggio here, and then skip, for example, in this case, down a six to the F, from E 
to IFLAP, which is nice enough as a challenge, etc. Okay, I think that uh, it's pretty much understood. Um, the two phases of this exercise, one is just going from the end, okay, from the seventh or some sort of seventh or sixth um, onto the next root. Another thing is just to try to memorize the roots and to go from root to root. That's like phase two because it's, it's harder just to memorize the A here and to realize that you are going a fourth. Um, that's, you know, that's um, harder, but that's like the next level. Okay, so this is um, assorted. Um, functionally connected um, probably um, makes more sense um, for easy practice because they are functionally connected. It's like a two, five, one, four, um, five, you know, um, cadential, you know, code, you know, etc. Okay, so you can see that the movement here, um, it makes sense functionally. Um, not that it's easy, it's not, but um, it makes sense in a functional way because um, you can see that, uh, you know, moving down fifths and stuff, then, you know, that's like more familiar. It's not random, okay? Um, let's move on to um, the set in a row atonal results. Um, that's um, that's not an easy exercise, but once we, um, you know, the, get the hang of it, of just doing them, that's a great exercise to do. Not easy at all, but worthwhile trying. Okay, and, and, um, the second part will be just identify them um, by <clears throat> grasping, first of all, the roots, and then sticking to the color, okay, the color. I mean, um, I did not write the code symbols here intentionally, because um, that's a part of an exam, supposedly, that you can, you know, um, initiate for yourself, or if the teacher, you know, here, which I'm sure there are. Um, these are just tips that I came up with, and I think that um, for me, um, it worked. Um, I did it for myself. I 
kind of, so to speak, invented it. And uh, for me, it worked. And I think that, uh, it should work for everybody. It's just a matter of um, getting into it and falling in love with um, the idea of being able to do it. Um, it all takes work, but you know, just like anything else in music. Um, okay, uh, what I'll do now is um, I think that I'll um, um, give a break from this um, uh, for the sake of questions. Um, so please ask me anything, and I hope I can answer. I'm not promising anything. I'll try. So, um, is there any question here, maybe in the chat? Um, how do you recommend, oh, uh, from Gilson? Um, how do you recommend your students practice how to memorize this code? Okay, I think that the best way is just to sit down at the piano. Piano is the best. Um, guitar is okay, but guitar is, you know, limited in such a way that um, some chords, um, would take a lot of stretching and you know if you want to play for example you know c c sus4 c f g b flat you know um it's almost impossible unless you know you have you know gigantic hands you know like um, some guitars do okay but uh, i think that the piano is just you know an immediate um choice so how do we do it? I think that uh, we have to um, remember that um, there are some which are pop more popular and more in and simpler, uh, like major seven, uh, which is like everyone is you know in love with this chord because it's a beautiful chord. Um, it's a bonfire type chord, you know, but it's also a great jazz chord, like a one chord. Uh, very sweet sounding. So we, we should, first of all, I think, um, try to understand uh, what's familiar, you know, what's familiar, uh, what, I mean, that's one way of doing this is just uh, to throw an exam and see what happens and, and see just, you know, statistically, uh, which ones are uh, more familiar. I think that uh, the ones that are familiar uh, would be the, the first category, which is a uh, dominant sevens, major sevens and sixes. Uh, minus six could be, okay, minus seven is familiar. And then uh, we go up like um, in, you know, in difficulty level, uh, which is like um, seven plus five, um, seven sharp five would, would be more complex. The sus four is very familiar. The sus um, seven, major seven is rare actually. Um, although, we can find it in Bach, you know, a lot of Bach um, compositions contain this chord as a pedal chord. Um, this is one thing, and uh, another thing is just to attach them to to the to the block to the chord that is being played, you know, simultaneously as a chord, and then to sing it, just to sing the melody, and to sing against the chord that is being played. This is. Um, I think that that helps a lot. I uh, hope I answered it. Um, right on. Okay. Uh, for those who are um, a bit later, okay. Thanks so much, Omri. Um, any other questions? This is the right time to do it because uh, just realize that if we have a slot of you know, our questions afterwards, um, the tendency is to forget. Okay, what we we had in mind. So this is you know right now is a perfect um, time to go ahead and ask anything. Thank you, Gilson. Tada. And um, okay, so I'll just move on. Um, again, if you have questions, don't hesitate, and you know either write them down here on the chat or feel free to, to speak up. It's okay, we're among friends here. You know, transatlantic event, which is absolutely amazing, you know. 
I think it's, you know, it's really fascinating. Okay, so let's get back to that. Uh, let me find a page. Um, okay, so we'll go, we'll just run over it because there's no other way of doing this. Um, can you see it? No, you can't. Okay, let me just do it and then share screen after um, approaching it. Yes. Okay. Okay, so sorry about that. We have to just, you know, go through these funny stuff here. Um, I just wanted to show you some other aspects which are more complex, okay? Um, Multi-level things. Um, the hard code stuff, you know. Hard code, hard code. Okay, assorted, functionally connected. We've been through all these. Um, okay, now another topic, which is kind of, you know, tough, but again, Tough is just, you know, it's a relative thing. I mean, once we get a hang of, you know, the seventh course, the next level will be um, getting familiar with um, upper structures. Okay. First of all, what are um, the upper structures? Basically, they are a scale that is split into two codes. For example, if we're taking um, the well known. Um, Lydian flat seven, we have a C, E, A, C, E, G, sorry, B flat, D, F sharp, and A. Now we can split them and write them in such a manner right here. You can see that we have, you know, fraction type of uh, slash code. It's not, you know, a slanted, it's just straight fraction like in math. Okay, um, it's like D flat minor over C7, but these are two chords now. Uh, for the sake of practicing, we don't need the fifth. Okay, we do not need the fifth on the basic chord. Okay, C7 is just good enough with having a root and two diatoms, which are the third and the seventh. Okay. Um, upper structure would give us some um, tensions and sometimes photons, okay? Um, in this case, we have an F flat up there, which is an E, um, and harmonically. Um, this is the sound here. Okay, now this is an altered type chord. It comes from the, the altar, which is the um, seventh mode of harmonic minor. Um, it's it's called altered because um, comparing to the mixolydian, which is some kind of a default um, scale for dominant, uh, we alter stuff there. We have two nines, okay? We have a raised 11, and we have a 13, a flat 13, okay? Um, another one would be this chord, which is probably the most um, popular. Okay, combination uh, scale gives us this um, sharp nine um, with a fifth, uh, like sh a shining star, you know, that song by Earth and Fire. Or major. Minor or major, okay. Um, another altar would be using um, this chord, which is the Petrushka chord by Stravinsky. Everything here, by the way, uh, we can find, um, I'll give you the list after there, we can find in classical music. Okay, um, another one would be another type of altar, which is, you know, the six, up six chord, with the A flat, A flat for, um, for alter. Okay, now we have um, 
another combination which we know um, this is a Stevic wonder chord. You can find it in my You Are the Sunshine of My Life. That's, that's that happens sometimes. And the last one would be the Mixolydian soft chords on um, just C7 and a B flat on top. Okay. Maiden Voyage, there'll be Hancock and many, you know, and Chikoria. Rest in peace. Um, this is like, you know, the very, very well known jazz chords. Okay, uh, two upper structures for um, major seven. Okay. They're pretty much the same. Okay, just a different spelling here, but um, that's a Lydian. Such a Lydian chord, right? Um, it's you know, I mean, um, I think that um, when I hear this chord, um, it's um, there are so many musicals that use these chords. Okay, it's a typical theatric, theatrical chord. Okay, um, Apple structure and superimpositions, which is the same, tonic and subdominant functions, okay? Um, we have two types of usage uh, for minors. Um, the C minor here, I call it, it's a king, it's a tonic, okay? Um, the other one, I call it a soldier, because it serves as, usually, as a two. So this is the one. Okay, I think that um, when I hear this chord, I think of um, um, my favorite thing by Coltrane. That's McCoy's chord right there. Sorry about that. It happens sometimes, as I said. And this is a two chord. Okay, another one uh, which is neat is um, superimposition on half diminished, but we have to take um, in consideration that we use here a natural ninth of the Locrian, which is, you know, sixth mode of melodic minor would be Locrian natural ninth. This is a beautiful chord. Bill Evans. Um, Bill Evans is using this chord a lot as a two, as a two in minor. Okay, um, okay, now this is a bunch of um, symmetrical um, diminished um, upper structures. Um, if we have the C um, diminished, fully diminished, we can, um, we can uh, impose um, a B or a B minor, a B or a D minor, F or each one of them can be either major or minor, which is neat. Okay, so this is one. That's a very, you know, impressionistic sounding chord. All of them are basically the same chord because a diminished would be a diminished, you know, that's the infinite chord. So these are all the same chord and, you know, uh, there are 64 um, diminished chords, okay? For each one, each diminished chord is, has 64, meanings exactly okay i counted these are all um scriabins um you know and messian is using them a lot so it's all coming you know it's not necessarily jazz it's like um it's like modern um you know the turn of the century type codes um more than you know for back then but it still sounds very very neat and um a lot of jazz musicians are using this now um let me get back on practical stuff um this is just a data um to check out um but we'll get to the practicality in a sec okay um i'll just give you another um example this is secret love 
okay, played normally, so to speak, with the changes that we know, okay? Yes, that's good. Now, Monk would have done this kind of thing. Okay, what we have here is just the same, uh, same harmony pretty much, condensed into triads. And then, you know, we make these an upper level. I call it the English bus technique, uh, because it's just like a double decker, it has two levels, two decks. Okay, now I'm going back. Okay. Um, I'm going back to practicality. So I'm just reversing this a little bit. Um, and, you know, in, you know, for the sake of um, tips, practical tips. So, okay, let's see these. Um, how do we practice? Okay, what we do is just, first of all, we play them. We, here, we have to play them first. And then slowly but surely, we get, you know, the lower part together. Um, I'll just go to the piano here. Okay. Once we established, you know, the C7, we just need again root and two guitons. We just need three and seven. We do not need a fifth. The fifth is there anyway, you know, because it's the second overtone. So it's there, okay? Um, but we don't really need it because it's going to clash with a lot of stuff. I mean, here, for example, it's going to clash with um, the A flat, it's going to give us um, a flat nine, which we don't need. I mean, that's also in orchestration. We, we don't do that. Uh, when we use upper structures. So uh, basically the idea is just to avoid the fifth altogether, just we don't need it. Um, and then we go, uh, we can notice that um, the root of the upper structure is a tension, it's D flat. So it's a flat nine. We know that, um, <laughs> Okay, so once we have this sound here, uh, we just portray okay, all together. We can play um, the upper structure in, in any position. It's not in versions really, but we can, you know, we can arpeggiate it and um, the more we do it, the more it will get. Um, that's another way of practicing um, tensions. Um, if we deal with um, dominant chords, okay, we can have um, basically three types of nines and two types of elevens and two types of thirteens. Um, dominant chords are the only ones that actually um, take or, you know, um, we can base on them um, everything as far as tension, you know, go, okay? Uh, major seven, for example, uh, we will not tolerate anything like that. I mean, for anything like um, each, each one of the 15 chords um, can take nine, for example, all of them. But only dominant or um, the ones that contain flat seven can take all three uh, all three nines. Okay, so major seven and diminished and you know minor uh, they will all take nines. But the only one that will take you know all bunch of you know all sorts of uh, different tensions would be dominant. We have to memorize this. Okay, and then the step would be just uh, to go. And here, for example, just to sing um, the CE 
B flat and then the ninth. And then once we have the ninth, we go ahead and we just sing the major chords from that point, okay? Um, so these are basically the ideas here. Um, you can, you know, print screen it. Um, it's all in the book that is going to be available pretty soon. In Amazon, there's a Kindle book. Um, but, you know, you can just um, print screen it and woodshed it, as we say, practice it, you know. Same goes for on the next one. You know, play, play the theme at the seven. That's the best way to do it. Get the nine and build from there. The tried. And then we are all set. Once we can sing them, and we can, you know, once we can sing them and play them simultaneously, we are all set. And we have, you know, a better harmonic ear training. Okay. Um, okay. These are, you know, I will send you a PDF. Whoever wants to do it. I mean, I can just condense um, this PowerPoint. I can send it to Professor Matsuka or anybody who, you know, wants to talk to me. I'm on Facebook and all that, and LinkedIn and all these social media um, possibilities. Okay, um, work hard and enjoy the results. I mean, I have some other, um, I, I'm not sure about the time, and um, do we have some more time, Professor? Well, um, actually, maybe five more minutes, but some of us will have to go to the next class. Sure. So okay. um, people who need to leave, yeah, we will probably. Yeah, I'll just give you this because I must. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, I must do this at every, you know, thing that they do. Okay, so we have some time for... Um, for questions. Um, another thing that I had planned, but um, it's a short um, lecture here, the turnaround. We have to practice turnarounds. So that's one thing that I would like to dedicate a minute um, about it. Um, turnarounds, we should start in this order. You can actually write it down. We start from one, six, four, five. Okay, you can write it down, it's, it makes Total sense. One, six, four, five. Then we go ahead and we do one, six, two, five. Okay? Then next step would be um, subbing a, a three for one. So we have, you know, a quarter or fifth down, which means like if I'm in C, E minus seven, A minus seven, I'm diatonic now. D minus seven and G seven. Then we turn them into secondary dominance. E seven, A seven, D seven, G seven. Okay, next step would be subbing um, every other chord, which means A seven, E flat seven, sub five two, D seven, five five, and D flat seven, which is the home sub five, okay, local. Then we go and turn them again. Instead of E7, we are going to have B flat seven, A flat seven, oh, sorry, B flat seven, E flat seven, A flat seven, B flat seven, the Ted Denron um, thing. Okay, uh, I think that um, that would be sufficient. Um, turnarounds are good for us. Okay, probably for next lecture. So Good. if um, I see some questions here, I have to get ready to my 2 p.m. Thank you, Gilson. Uh, okay, no more questions, I think. Or are there? Are there any questions?
Oh, you say. If, if we just have a little a little moment, one question. Yes. The, sure. Could you just uh, repeat a little bit more about the way you recommend for the best, the most efficient practice, how to practice that sort of approach? You mentioned about the ninth of the court, that's the starting point. Yeah, I mean, when we deal with upper structures, uh, the best way is just, um, again, uh, we don't need to fit just one and two guidelines. And then on top of that, I mean, we start gradually. If we're in C, we start with V flat and then we go to D, E flat, and then the next one available will be in F sharp or G flat, A flat, A, and a B flat for sus, okay? Um, there aren't too many of them on dominant chords. Um, the vast number would be on diminished chords because these are wild and, you know, it's like an ever-going thing almost endlessly. But on the dominance, we, we have just, you know, up flat um, two, up two, upper structure two, upper structure flat three, upper structure flat five, upper structure flat six, upper structure six, and upper structure flat seven on a sus. That's basically it. Uh, once we get, you know, the hang of these, um, we're pretty much all set and we'll hear it. We'll hear everything. Um, you know, it's not only from my experience as, you know, as a musician. Um, that's the way I taught myself, but also I know that it, it has been successful as far as practicing these things with students. It takes time, but we have enough time. Great. Any other questions, please? Okay. In fact, for those of you who are still here, um, whoops, sorry. Yep. I'm typing my um, email address. So you can email me your email address and then Dr. Palti, when he sends me the um, files, um, some references, I can send them over to you as well. So, and I will uh, send the link to this recording to Dr. Palti so he can also share it with his students. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Palti. Thanks so much for having me and thanks so much for everyone who came along. Yes, thank you for well, coming. Thank you. All right. Have a good night or afternoon. It depends thank you. where you are. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. It was amazing. So that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Well, there are many people that I know from my classes. And Thank you. Spasiba. <laughs> many languages. Yes. This one is like the US, you know, in that aspect. You know, Jinku, yeah, exactly. I wish I knew. I mean, I, I know some, you know, Czech because my mom, you know, oh. was Czech, but you know, and you know, Polish and Czech are pretty close, you know, so right, yeah. So, I'm terribly sorry, but I do have to close this room, yeah, because good. I have to go to another class. Yeah, so, sure. thank you again for coming, Thanks and so uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.